Hello, everyone. Where are you? You are with us in the power of food again. Uh, the live streaming uh, edition, special edition of Sangna Nagelha Blood and Guts Symposium. Uh, we have been uh, talking and uh, hosting a lot of uh, uh, incredible people from the food industry, from Portugal, from all over the world. Now we are very, very honored and proud to, to welcome Alex Atala, which has been here with us. Hello, Alex. And Hi. very special guest as well, Daniel Hamm. Uh, from New York, the United States. Um, with us is as well João Vengurovio, she's moderating this talk. Uh, we are late for minutes, but still stay there. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Hello again, uh, we are back to the power of food. This time we are very honored to welcome Alex Atala and Daniel Ham. Uh, Alex Atala is a chef of two, Mich two Michelin star restaurant, Dom, and one of the head founders of Ata Institute and co-founder of Fruto Food Conference and platform of engagement and mobilization to discuss food and its challenges. Uh, Daniel Ham is the chef uh, and owner of Make It Nice, the group behind the three Michelin star restaurant 11 Madison Park, which Daniel Ham has converted into a commissary kitchen, uh, producing thousands of meals a day and distributing uh, them to first responders and to people in need. João Vengurovius, it's a, a former publicist, and is the author of We Chefs. He was with us yesterday. Uh, welcome back, uh, João. Welcome, everyone. Uh, João, um, you will lead this conversation. So, over to you. Thank you. Hi, guys. I'm really uh, happy to be with both of you. I um, uh, have so many things to ask you, but I, wanted, I would like to also to enlighten people about another aspect of this uh, pandemic and how it's affecting restaurants, which uh, it has been already touched in some of the conversations before, but I think there is an opportunity here to go a bit further, which is the collective side of these and the community side of these and, uh, and the responsibilities that chefs uh, have uh, to the community and, and the things you do. So um, I'll start with, with, uh, with Daniel. Daniel uh, Six weeks ago, five weeks ago, I don't know anymore. Uh, you you closed the restaurant, and then a week later, I think you decided to to do something you never done it before, I believe, which is um, turned Eleven Medicine Park into a commissary kitchen and serve thousands of meals a day to the, the ones in need. Can can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, you know, it, it was kind of like it, it was sort of an instinct. Um, I think. In New York, definitely, but I think everywhere, I think it, it caught us all off guard and it kind of happened overnight um, that our restaurants uh, came to a closure. And um, in New York, it's, it's been the epicenter of the pandemic and, and it's been pretty, pretty intense um, to, to be there. Um, but in the first few days, you know, we had our last night of service and uh, we were still almost full, fully booked. And then we said goodbye and we said, okay, let's see each other soon. And uh, we had no idea, but then we realized in the coming days that this would take much longer and um, that we had to let people go. And a lot of our staff works, they are from all over the world, they're on visas. So all the visas had to go back home. That's like 30% of our staff. So. And, and, you know, the biggest capital of a restaurant is, is the people and is the people working together and that knowledge and that, you know, harmony, you know, 
of performing. How many people? Two hundred. How many people? Two hundred. And uh, yeah. so I, I knew that I knew that it will never be the same because if all the people are gone, they will never work together in the same way. And so that was just devastating. And uh, you know, in the beginning, I thought maybe a delivery of sort could work. But in New York, things were so intense that, that that was a scary thought and that wouldn't save the restaurant. And, and, and there were a lot of liabilities um, coming with that. So then I just took a few days and, and, and one morning I woke up and I'm like, okay, I, I have a kitchen. I have the contact to the suppliers. I'm on the board of a non-for-profit organization. I could probably raise some money. And so I felt the need um, to contribute somehow. Um, and so I, I, for like four days, I learned as much as I could about the soup kitchens, the commissary kitchens. So I went around these kitchens because uh, I wanted to work very safely. Um, but as I go around these commissary kitchens to learn, I knew nothing about these meals. What, what is a meal like that? How is it packaged? How does it get delivered? What's the cost of a meal? All these things. So I learned as much as I could. And as I'm learning, the soup kitchens are all shutting down because they rely on volunteers. And a lot of volunteers are elderly. And so they were, you know, um, you know, they couldn't work during these times. So uh, it was definitely tough, but I was able to get some money together. The, the toughest part was that we, ha we have a team that, that would do anything it takes. Like for the last 10 years, I've been working with them. They do whatever it takes. They work 18 hours a day if they need to. The, the day I sent out an email to the 200 people that I'm doing this project and I need people to help me, I only got eight people responding. And uh, the eight people, I didn't even know who they were. It was like some reservationist who was like started three months ago or, you know, it wasn't the core group. So the fear, the fear was just uh, really, people were really scared. And so it felt like at the very beginning when I moved to New York and I had to convince everyone to work with me because nobody knew who I was. And I asked them to work, you know, 16 hour days for like, you know, no money, basically. Uh, so I felt I found myself uh, back in that kitchen, trying to call people to convince them that what I want to do is a good idea. Um, it was really scary, but then it started to be really um, motivating. And I will never forget these 12 people who showed up that very first morning. You know, everyone had fear in their eyes. But then as we started working, um, people started getting more comfortable and it was actually really good for the morale. Yeah. Um, and just the power of food, that, that, that's the thing. Food is so powerful and, and it reinvigorated me uh, in, in completely new ways. How lucky are we, Alex, that we get to work with food. Like food has given us, I know for you too, food has given us everything. I dropped out of school when I was 14. I've, I've learned languages, I've traveled the world, the people I've met, all through food. It's always been food that's given me the answers to move forward. Um, and then, but, but as I'm starting to work with this, three days into it, today we produce 5,000 meals a day. Um, but three days into it, I'm starting to realize why are we not always feeding people in need? Um, I realized that it didn't take much to cook these meals. And I'm realizing that every restaurant in the world cooks inexpensive, delicious meals because that's how we feed our staff. And we try to fight hunger with all these commissary kitchens or soup kitchens with volunteers. But we have so many restaurants. In New York alone, there's 40,000 restaurants. So if we could buy meals for like $5 a meal from restaurants, let's say, Alex, you could, let's say 
you could cook 200 extra family meals and you would get a thousand dollars for that every day mm -hmm. as a restaurant owner and chef you would say yes i'm doing that because you have to pay the rent and all this stuff anyway so i feel that for me it's just been amazing because i think in the last few years i've been searching for more meaning and i think through this crisis it has given me more meaning and i feel like the recipe that i really want to share with the world is that no matter what restaurant you are we all can feed people in need all the time as, as we do also what we do and i think that's the recipe i want to share with the world amazing uh, i mean i'll come back to that <laughs> i'll come back to that. i'll go to alex uh, and and following on the thought I, I read something you, you wrote recently or said recently that this is a collective problem and therefore it demands a collective solution. Can you elaborate on that? What are you saying with that? Yeah, well, we, we are experienced uh, maybe something that uh, happens a few times in our lives, which is you are dreaming to kiss your crush and then you wake up and said why i wanna i wanna go back to my dream but uh you have a, 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 a your life the reality and we wake up from a beautiful dream that we had before now we might to face a nightmare <laughs> I mean, it's even worse than whether that ever happened with, with us as a human beings. Uh, I'm telling, I started this, this, this explanation talking about dreams because uh, did, I, I didn't make a business. My restaurant is not my business. My restaurant is my fucking dreams. It's my time life dream. Yeah. I, didn't, I, 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 I don't care if I make money or not make money. That's, that that that's never has been my motivation. When I realized that my restaurant is my dream, not my business, I realized all connections that we have. And since from my top client, client or customers, mm -hmm. since from my suppliers, which can be indigenous people in Amazonas. So, uh, this is this is this is as powerful as 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 internet. This is real connect people. Mm. The pandemic now is touching everyone. Everyone. We are all in the same in the same scenery, in the same frame. We are human beings fucking afraid. And we don't. We, we, we didn't have any any any, any guess, any weight, or any any trail to fall. So we we might to be open to make uh, maybe mistakes, to try to make a to to find the right way. <laughs> we all. So we are talking about uh, indigenous. Chefs, regular people, customers. We are all. We need to change. We need to face something that uh, there is no no history before. We are doing a new history. We are experiencing a lifetime change all together in a collective perspective yeah. the solution will be not from politicals or from presidents or for, for, for or from medicine we all need to change we need to change as human being and once we we wake up from a beautiful dream and we are we realize that we are living a, a nightmare maybe maybe we can learn new values i mean time what you have been doing 
the last uh, 30, 40 years from your life? How you spend your time? How you feed yourself? How you feed other people? How are your staff today? The team, uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, um, last week was, 10 days ago was super difficult for myself because uh, I might fire people. And I, just, uh, I, I couldn't digest it. I want to bring them back. We need to find a way. We need to find a way. I, 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 I can't save the world. I can't save my restaurant. I can't save my team. But we can. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is, this is, if I can, say something that uh, we might to reset our mind and save the real values that you have, which is love each other, which feed your, the, the, the people who, who you, you love with love, with love. This is, this is we, do, we don't need to feed people only with food. We need to feed people with love. Maybe food is a way to express it. This is well. Uh, go back to, to Daniel. Uh, thank you. Uh, you you are facing this as as I understand from your words as, as a transformative uh, experience in a way because you will be different when this. Oops, sorry, my Saint Pellegrino is not in the right position. You will be, <laughs> you will be a different person, and uh, and we'll probably there will be a different uh, Eleven Madison Park as well. You can't. You everyone talks about going back to normal, but do you do we really need or want to go back to the same normal? Was it everything okay before? Well, first I think first is question: Can we can we mm -hmm. go back? Um, and and the answer, in my case, I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure if we can afford to even reopen Eleven Madison Park because we all know that it takes a lot of money to open one of those restaurants. We've been like now we've been closed. It's going to require money to reopen all these restaurants and. And there are outstanding bills that every restaurant has, and you know. And so, it, is it makes sense to reopen it? And then, what are we reopening it to? Are we going to have half our our guests, or thirty percent of our guests, or you know, we don't know. Like so, in a way, th this is a new beginning. And um, and and then if the lucky ones who are able to figure it out how to open the doors again, um, I, I think it would be a missed opportunity to, to think that we, we will go back to the exactly same place as we were. I think we're really, we need to look at, at what's important to us, um, you know, what's important to our culture, to our teams, what experience do we want to give to our guests, I think this pandemic has exposed a lot of a lot of problems to the world. I, th I think I think people in you know in need of food is one of them, but then also the f the farming system and 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 it, it is so broken. There are so many things that are so broken in this world. I think we all need to take a really deep look. And, and when we come out of this, I hope we can all really, now we're all saying it, but I hope we can all really make significant changes to make this place a better place. I think we've been living like, and we all, we are all guilty. We are all guilty. We all carried, we were all carried away. We're traveling the world, chasing these awards, you know, and it was a wonderful, amazing time. But... But I think we all need to take a deep look and, and really, um, what, what can we do to make this place better? Can you, can and, you and restaurants play an important role because mm -hmm. restaurants, 
I, I think restaurants and food, it affects so many things. It, 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 it affects, you know, employees, it affects farming. I mean, it, it, it's, it's really like our, our voice is very important. And, um, and, and we can send a message as restaurants, as chefs. We, we, have, we have power to really, you know, send a strong message. And I think we all need to, you know, to do just that. to feed people to, you know, and, and, and I think a lot of chefs, I've never been motivated by, by money either. That's never been the point. I mean, who, who would get into that business? you know for money i mean we made, we made no money and it was and and it was probably some of the best times in our careers the, the time we made the least money was probably the most fun um but um yeah but we have a big voice and we need to use it and and yeah it, it's it's really devastating i mean i i go from being you know finding the silver lining finding the positiveness because there is it is a magical time right now and and if you pay attention and if you listen the world is telling you a lot um so but but then but then there are moments where i'm just devastated and i'm sad for the people i will never work with again and i'm sad for our restaurants but it it, co it goes back and forth and I, I think it's important that the negative doesn't take the wind out of the positive. Um, no. Well, yes, it's hard to, to keep the energy up and the spirits up with these. And, and, and as time goes by, and uh, we are now in the six weeks or eight week of all these confinements around the world. Uh, at the beginning, you have this sense of emergency. So you can, you're very alert, you can do a lot of things, but after a while, uh, do you feel that you, you're getting less energy and less uh, strength to carry on with your project that you're doing right now in this uh, cuisine and this kitchen? Or, or, or on the contrary, you, you're getting no. more it, it, it It's kind of like I had an important conversation. I've been talking to a lot of people who have been doing this work, feeding people in need. Um, uh, for a long time and and I think in the beginning there's like this euphoria and feeling like wow I really I, I feel like I, I figured something out how it can be solved or how it can help solve it and then you have this euphoria and I had a conversation uh, with someone and he said you know I, I really love what you're talking about but it's 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 a life's work and um, mm -hmm. you know do you have as much passion for this as you have once had to get, you know, three Mishnah stars or, and, and, and he, he's like, because that is, that will be required. And so I understand it. it it's going to take a lot of energy and, and the fire has to be very strong to really make a significant difference. Um, and, and because we're struggling with so many other things, I mean, we're struggling also to survive. But it's amazing how, how in these situations when you're already struggling, you know, day and night and you try to figure out how to keep your staff and, you know, and you're, you're realizing you can't, you're going to figure out, can I keep my restaurant or can I not? But in these times, somehow there's some energy that gets set free. That's very powerful. And um, yeah, I think, I think I feel stronger and stronger mm -hmm. about, about my conviction that, that I want to make this uh, part of my life. And, and, and I really want to feed, you know, I want to continue to use food as, as art and give experiences and, and, and you know, and, and really celebrate it the way, in a creative way like we have. I want to continue that. That's, that's my passion, my love. Um, and, and, and we will continue to feed the top one percent you know but but on the other hand I, I i feel a responsibility now that we also have to feed you know the the, the bottom ten percent we really have to connect these dots and 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 we have to bring them together and i i think in the future just to have a restaurant w without a higher purpose um 
uh, I don't think that's the way forward. I, I think businesses in general, businesses need, and, and when you look at the Gen C, you know, the younger generation, they wouldn't even go work in a place that doesn't have a higher meaning. So I think for, for, for businesses to have a purpose beyond um, just being a business is crucial. That's a very good point to Alex, uh, about this. I want to talk about something which maybe we don't, don't, don't talk often here, but uh, because Daniel raised the issue of, of having a, a purpose as a company, that is also true for all the companies around the world, for many of the brands uh, and the companies that are you know, have being scrutinized about their behavior and how do they get back something to the society. Um, and you have some sponsors. I mean, I think Daniel has a sponsor uh, to do these uh, in Majestic Kitchen. Uh, and you have a sponsor for one of the programs you're doing, which I'd like to talk about. I think it's changing our behaviors and finding new learning on the day to day. Yeah. Uh, please tell me, Alex, about, uh, a little bit about that program, but also about the possibility of brands helping these projects on the long term, not just because we have an emergency right now and it's very opportunistic and let's do that, or, but because they themselves believe in that. They believe they, have, they should have this positive impact in society. Well, João, uh, thanks God we have sponsors. Maybe this is a new time to really understand what means the sponsorizing. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe it is time to see new Robin Hoods again. <laughs> we are not we are not stealing people. Yeah, we are not using for our benefit. We are using for common benefit. I have a, 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 a I just I, I just started uh, something with a with a with a credit card company where I try to share people a little knowledge that I have to cook in at home and save uh, food scraps. Teaching people to give, give a new value for the ingredient. Wow. Let's, let, let, let me give to you guys one idea. We love money or we have been loving money for all our life. And it's not a shame. We love money. We really give value for money, for money. And we we never we never we never throw away a, a single coin. Doesn't matter if you go for Africa or Indonesia or South America. You bring back home one single coin, and you never throw a coin away. Why? But sometimes you can throw away a coin in a fountain to desire to make more money. <laughs> And, 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 and this is, we, we have been teach, we have, it's part of our culture. Why do we throw away food? Yeah, it's crazy. When, when, uh, when I, uh, this, the, last, the last 10 years, I have been working quite a lot with indigenous people, and lots of them don't care about money. And they save every single piece of food. Wow. That's we are talking about, we, 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 we're not talking about, uh, 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 about money. So when we learn this, or we have this possibility to learn and understand it and bring back from our quotidian life, how are we going to share, how are we going to spread this learning that I have the blessed to learn with them, with everyone, yeah. through a sponsor, through a sponsor. So there's there's a, 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 a there's there's a, a new win win. The chef sponsorized can be can, can, can spread a new message. Who those one who received the message has a gift has a learning, and the sponsor has a new a new value from his company. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm trying hard to understand the circle of the chef 
uh, or maybe a public speaker, mm -hmm. have a sponsor, and try to use this in a good way. Good way. In a good way, not uh, only to my benefit, not only to make my money or, or make my vanish bigger. Yes. Use this possibility to make normal people cooking at home. And cooking at home, it's already remaining the value of cooking because people are not cooking anymore. Mm -hmm. And once you start to cooking, you start to understand better what is buying, mm -hmm. where your ingredients come from, the way that have, have been produced and how you're going to serve it for people whom you love. So there's, there's again uh, 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 a, a new learning. Mm -hmm. And then when you go for this learning, which is cooking, you, go, you can go deep and go to the ingredients. And to the ingredients, you can start to talking about uh, or thinking about biodiversity. Of course, for us Brazilians, talking about Amazonas, biodiversity is wow. But come on, let's, let's bring, bring biodiversity to the ground, to the, the moment that we live. <clears throat> the last 20 years, we used to drink few wines from few places in the world. Nowadays, we drink much more wine from everywhere, for the whole entire world. And we start to learning about geography, geology, climate, virus. This is biodiversity, my man. This is biodiversity. So eating, it is a way to learning and give value from the ingredients and, the, and then to the nature. So again, if I can went back for the concern or the concern of, uh, 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 of being sponsorized, Thanks God, we have this possibility. Yes. And As Daniel said, chefs has a voice, and we might we can spread this message in a good way and giving real benefits for everyone. The same for you, Daniel. I think applies. Uh, what I love, I'm just listening to Alex, and I'm I'm so impressed and just touched by 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 what he's talking about and and where his his mind is at, and I think the what I appreciate about this moment is that it it kind of erases all the bullshit and it kind of shows who everyone is. You you kind of can see very clearly who who people are and what they're doing and where their mind is at. And, and that part I'm grateful for. And um, honestly, like, I, I don't know. And I think a lot of us are in the same boat and I'm, I'm always trying to keep it positive, you know, but we are, our, our restaurants are closed. We, there is no income. There's no money flowing. We don't know when this is going to change. We, we have a profession and a business that is completely shut down at this very moment. And, and it's really, really frightening and scary. I mean, in New York, we don't know. We, we have no idea. They, I think restaurants are going to open in September and they're talking about a second pandemic this fall. Are we even going to have restaurants this year? And what is this going to mean? So it's as we're having these conversations, um, I think it's important to understand that the, the, the chefs and the people in our industry are, are, are facing extreme difficulties. And, and, and we, we actually also don't know there's a lot of people who working in this industry who are not going to know how to even bring food to the table or, or bring, you know, or pay their rent if this continues for another two months. I mean, that's just the reality. So, but, but as I'm trying to stay positive, I appreciate that I can see who people are and who, who, who is standing up and who is doing some important work right now. 
and it's beautiful and, and it's selfless. It's, it, this isn't about money. Actually, now it actually shows the people who are not doing it for the money. Um, and that's what I appreciate. And Alex, congratulations on everything you do. Beautiful. Uh, I'm sorry. If you, uh, sorry, uh, Daniel, you're seeing a lot of solidarity coming up as well from from other you know, chefs, suppliers, or customers. I think you you made an auction, for instance, for a relief fund for your employees, and and a lot of people uh, participated on that. Those no, are I, I, which was beautiful. Yeah, we 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 did a silent an auction. I I called some of my friends for some stuff to donate or I donated myself a lot and and we you know we we raised money for our staff to just give back which which was really meaningful and we're really grateful I, I think people do want to support um, you know our industry I think everyone is in shock how little it took to wipe out the whole industry yeah. right it's unbelievable and maybe this is and maybe this is now you know we've been always criticized about pricing in restaurants mm -hmm. and you know and, and maybe this shines a light on on how little people are paid in our industry and and how small the margins are in in, in what we do and, and and you know maybe now when this comes back maybe there will be less restaurants but the ones that are there are more special and, and maybe people are willing to also pay more to have these experiences. No, it's true, absolutely, because uh, in fine dining, and if you talk to people outside this, this, um, this forum of people who usually go to these places, no one understands that you're not getting a lot of money. They, they find yeah. them in disbelief. Of course, I pay, and I go out of there and pay to 300 euros or whatever. And, and it's impossible. They must be super rich. And then I try to explain that it's not the case. And uh, most of the times, uh, no one really uh, understands it. But the truth is, as you said, the margins are razor thin. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the whole business is very fragile. And, and it, something like this, which is like a couple of months or two or three months is without revenue, but you still have to pay the rents, even if you found some kind of government help solution for your employees, is not enough. Yeah. Because it costs uh, without yeah. revenue, and then that's, that's impossible. Uh, um, Alex, how, how, how is your team? I mean, because teams are, it takes a long time to, to build a team, a dream team. And I, 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 I'm, I'm, all the chefs that I talk to through the process of writing new chefs, they really highlighted that. I mean, it's not hiring just people. You're hiring someone who has connected the rest of the team, who has some special skills, they complement each other, who understands and believes the, the, um, the purpose of the restaurant and, and the mantra of the restaurant. And what happens if these people you know, don't find a job for the next, if you, if you can't reopen for the next months? I mean, you don't want to lose these people. Um, I'm a red loss on my team. Mm. We might you understand it. We will never be the same again. No. Even if all team are in the same place, don't will we never be dumb again? No. We'll be a new dome. Mm. We might you face it. We might you understand. We, we might you put our feet on the ground. Ken, sorry if I if I have been so no, no. Uh, uh, dream is over, man. Dream is over. We might yeah. you really understand everything. We might you face this the, 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 this pandemic in a new way. That's the reason why I I I, I told you before that a, a collective solution. Yes. The solution is few steps back, maybe one forward. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 well, talking about my team, man, I have a few guys that uh, they didn't have food on table already. Yeah. In five weeks that restaurant is closed, few people who have been working with me for years 
are starving. Of course, we are trying to do our best. Of course, we are supporting them. This is not enough because for each employee that I have, That's maybe they have uh, three kids. Yeah. Or and the money that, 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 that we are trying to, or the, the, the best that we can, is not enough. So again, the worst already happened. Just to give an idea to people, sorry, about, about the, the size uh, of this community. I mean, each restaurant builds a larger family, if you, if you will, around it of, of people that, you know, how many employees you have? Uh, uh, like uh, to say. We have, uh, we used to have 270. Uh, now we have uh, 118. Okay. So barely 100 was fired. Uh, but uh, I, we are not. This is. This, we are talking about direct, direct. Uh, yes, that's what I was saying. Employees. That's direct. But let me tell you. Th yeah. Let me tell you something, John. Uh, I have. I, I work quite a lot with the small suppliers, the small farmers, and few of them. I didn't. I didn't buy ingredients for them. I put money in their business, and they pay me in a way what the nature gave them back. So we didn't have we, we didn't have this formal uh, we didn't we didn't have this formal rela uh, relation. Okay. That I pay ten thousand dollars, and you became back ten thousand kilos. Okay. We have a trust. We build a trust. Okay. I put money, and they send me the best as they can. This is broken. This is broken. And how I mean, many of that? Again, there's a lot of people like that. A lot of another people. thousand, another thousand families. Another, at least another thousand families. If I didn't count the projects from NAFTA Foundation, yeah, with indigenous people in 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 in, 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 in Amazonas and also in other parts of Brazil. So big, big problem. Problem is bigger than only fired some employees or a few yeah, families. That's right. or, uh, that's right. It is not only in Brazil. Yes, it's in exactly. Portugal. It's in New York. It's in, in America. It's in all Americas. In Europe. Also, it's, it's, it is. You, do, we do wake you, up from a, big, a, big, a, a beautiful dream yeah. in a toughest nightmare ever. Guys, we have... Uh, <laughs> Two minutes and we are far behind uh, our time but it's so good we have uh, so many comments I believe we have people crying here in the Facebook listening to you we have a lot a lot of comments a lot of questions we decided not to put them to you because we we, we, we thought you were somehow answering these questions. We are also feeling emotion with this. Yeah, very Thank beautiful. You so much. Thank you. So maybe more than one minute for you. One for or two minutes. Two minutes. We delay, then Barbara, which you save you list. So, okay. More two minutes for each of you. Or less. So, so. Why? Let, let me make this question to both of you, so both of you will answer. Right? If, if 10 years from now, looking back, how will we tell this story? Or better still, how would you like uh, this story to be told? Uh, what, what will be the, the collective memory of these events 10 years from now, looking back? Daniel, first. <laughs> For me, um, you know, we all lived pretty, you know, incredible lives. And, you know, in our shoes, we traveled the world and we we served the rich and we celebrated luxury ingredients and all these things. And, and you know, in the art world, they're, they're traveling from art fair to art fair, from fancy party to fancy party. And I think in, in all industries, I, I think the world, you know, got definitely carried away. And, and it seems like um, the nature is, is saying, no, you, you know, there, there has to be a change. Uh, it can't keep going like this. I think we've been ignoring, there's been fires and earthquakes and hurricanes and we, we were just ignoring, ignoring, you know, we, we, we are actually at war with nature, I think. We humans are at war with nature. 
and and we somehow believe that that we can win this war but nature is definitely saying no way you know mm. and i think the pandemic is a huge huge wake up call it it cannot continue um the the way it was and and i hope in 10 years people will say you know everything got out of hand everything got out of control people are were too greedy they tried to make you know they they tried to advance make money and they just got carried away and then the pandemic came and it was a big wake up call and and without the pandemic um you know i don't know where the world will be uh today yeah. but 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 the pandemic was needed to 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 um equalize everything and and to 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 make us go back to um our real values and and to go back to appreciating each other the place we live in and have respect for it that would be my dream great alex mm -hmm. let me tell you something john in 10 years <laughs> i hope that we won't realize that uh the most beautiful moment from our life and the worst and the toughest moment for our life has one single point in common. They start and they end. Mm -hmm. How we cross the, the river to the real values. Real values. So friendship, family, nature, care each other. It is the new or the ingredients from the new recipe, from the new yeah. world, from the new yeah. society. Simple like this. Yeah. Well, we finished, well. we couldn't finish better this, this talk. Very, <laughs> very inspiring. I, I tell you once again, I, I have to thank everyone who is here. José Julio Mendes Vintém, uh, Rudolfo Vilar, uh, Miguel Veiga, Alessandra Borsato, uh, so many people. Sorry for not uh, posting your your your, answer, your questions, but I believe you have the answers from this talk. This is the power of food, guys. We are yeah. very very yeah. happy to. You, you leave us with a full heart for yeah. for an amazing day, guys. Uh, we are with, with a big deal. Thanks, thank you, João. Thanks for your time. For um, this is the importance of the chefs now in this crisis to. To tell us something like you, you told us today because we i feel emotion and i feel emotion we all yeah. feel emotion it's a wonderful day thank you for your sharing thank you for it so and much all the luck. Moment. keep going thank guys. you so much Thrown. disconnect okay don't Bye. disconnect guys stay there for yes atala alex well i'll just say thank you for you guys daniel missing you my man yeah i miss you, you too such so a good skilled inspiration for brazilian people uh, what you, you have been doing is it's moving move, moving our our business for the next level yeah thank Amen you level. thank you thank you. Thank, you. thank you my man stay Great there for, 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 for you are the man stay there you are stay with us for more 30 seconds as to we uh, to us me and paul uh, and the power of food we'll be back uh, at uh, 6 30 uh, more or less the lisbon time We'll be back with Jose Villes and Dan Barber and Alexandra Forbes. Uh, they are uh, they will be with us with us in a few uh, minutes. Thank you all. We'll be Thank back. You. Stay Give there. This. Don't go anywhere, guys. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you so much. Yeah.